so we get the vo the 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 grams or the quantities 0 0.2 grams then we move on to step two and say we just depress what we found the 0 0.2 into the equation so 0 0.2 multiplied by the given e value which is 0 0.22 everything divided by 0 0.009 you will get the volume required so please make that calculation and make, uh, let me know what you're going to calculate or what you're going to find. Four point eight nine million. Four point eight nine. Are we okay? Are we good with how she calculated that? Are we okay with how she calculated that? I'm having network challenges too. So yes, sir. For network, I don't know. There's nothing I can do. So you see how you, that's how you get that. There's 4.89 mils. So this is the volume of purified water required to make an isotonic solution of hydromorphine hydrochloride so the last part is now what amount exactly uh, the exact amount of uh the exact volume of sodium chloride that was added to this volume here to make the solution isotonic that's what it simply means so we're saying the 20 mils which is in question minus the mils or the volume that are in it, step two you are going to get 15.11 mils. So these are the mils of 0 0.9 sodium chloride solution that are required. You are required to determine the volume of purified water, which we have found, right? 4.89 mils and 0.9% sodium chloride solution needed to prepare 20 mils. So we found this. So it's the two, the one for water, 4.89, and the one for sodium chloride, 15.111. These two are required to make an isotonic solution of hydromorphine hydrochloride. If there are no questions, we move on. And I want a question, I love question. Yeah, uh, sir, sorry. Actually, my network just tripped off, so I didn't get this example. I just found it like on the last part uh, where I mentioned 15.11. Uh, yeah, what? So sometimes, um, sometimes the network may, may be a challenge, but uh, if it goes, if your network is giving you challenges, and uh, you can, if you are following, if you're able to see what's going on. I think you can also be, uh, you don't need to hear sometimes for you to, to follow the, the procedure. So like we are saying, the question is here, we want to, prepare, to calculate the volume of water and the volume of sodium chloride that will be required to prepare this one, 20 mils. So it means this 20 mils uh, is made up of uh, purified water, and sodium chloride. Now we just want to know how many, uh, what's the quantity, what's the volume of water in here, and what's the volume of sodium chloride, so that when we add the two plus the grams of the of the drug in question, we will get the 20 mils and prepare uh, an isotonic solution. Mind you, the grams here of of the of the drug substance 
are considered to be negligible, meaning they will not change the volume of the purified water and the sodium chloride. So we just consider the volumes of the two. And we said following the, the steps that we talked of in st uh, step one, step two, step three. Step one, we have to first of all, calculate the amount of the drug substance. And that's why we said 20 mils of 1%. We are saying 1% is the same as one gram in 100 mils. Therefore, X in 20 mils, what do you get? You get 0 0.2 grams. Now, in short, I wrote it this way. 20 mils, instead of going that way, I just said, you can even write it that way. 20 mils by 1% is equal to 20 mils by 0 0.01. This 0 0.01 is just dividing the one by 100. You get 0 0.01. And then you have your grams. Actually, when you get the grams, the most difficult part, I think, for this question is just getting the grams. Once you get the grams, the rest is simple. Replace it in the formula, and the E value is given here 0 0.22. Replace it there. Everything, when you multiply, divide by 0 0.009, you get the volume that is required in milliliters. Once you get that volume, simple. You already know the maximum volume or the final volume must be 20 mils. So for you to know now the volume of sodium chloride, just subtract what you got in step two from the maximum or final volume that is in it, in the question. Then you get the amount or volume of sodium chloride that is required to be added to this or this to be added to that to prepare an isotonic solution of hydromorphine, hydro. All right. Yeah, up here, McLaurin. Are we there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is our network back? Yeah, it's really tripping, sir. Really tripping, yeah. I'm having the same challenges. A bit. So I was saying you can also use freezing point data to prepare an isotonic solution. We talked of freezing point when you just started. And we said uh, uh an isotonic solution has a, uh, oh, sorry, the freezing point of um, lacrimal fluids and blood is equal to 0 0.52 degrees Celsius. The reason we denote a negative there is when we are talking about freezing point depletion. Depletion, of course, that's negative. So, we can use freezing point data to prepare isotonic solutions, more especially for those agents that do not penetrate biological membranes, such as uh, red blood cells. So when using the, the freezing point, we need to know the freezing point of an isotonic preparation. All isotonic preparations must have a freezing point of negative 0 0.5 to degrees Celsius. Remember I'm saying we add a negative because it's freezing point depletion. So how do we use the freezing point to prepare an isotonic solution? We look at an example and this should be the last example of the pharmaceutical calculations. If there are any other calculations, I'm sure we'll be able to do them when you, when you resume class, the time we're going to be, maybe when we'll be doing um, divisions, then we may consider um, if possible, uh, looking at one or two calculations, but this is, all there is for us to, uh, to cover.
and it's almost time up. Okay. Yes, I'll send you um I'll send you a link for about 20 minutes because once I start this one we have to finish it. So how many milligrams of how many milligrams each of sodium chloride and uh, debucane hydrochloride are required to prepare 30 ml of a 1% solution of debucane hydrochloride isotonic with tears? Now, remember what I was saying before you prepare actually an isotonic solution using freezing point, you need to know the freezing point of um freezing point of um uh, oh sorry freezing point of well, it's not here. yeah you need to know the freezing point of an isotonic solution or an isotonic preparation you need to know the freezing point of the given substances in in the question now those given substances, the freezing point, of course, it's already there. So in question, we'll give you the freezing point of each substance or preparation. Then all you need to do is to follow the steps that are required in preparing an isotonic solution using freezing point depletion or freezing point data. Okay, so to do that, the freezing point, of course, we know it's negative 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. So whatever you're going to have in your equation should be used to lower this, uh, to lower the freezing point to negative 0 0.52 degrees Celsius. Dibucane hydrochloride, the one in question, has a freezing point of 0 0.08 degrees Celsius. While sodium chloride has got it, a freezing point of 0 0.58 degrees Celsius. So this is what I was saying, you'll be given the freezing points of the substances in question. So in this case, I've given you sodium chloride and debucane hydrochloride, okay? So what we need to do now is how much of sodium chloride is required to lower the freezing point to negative 0 0.52 degrees Celsius. Because once that is done, it means the freezing point has been um, has been lowered, or freezing point depletion has taken place. So that's what we need to 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 know now. We are lowering the freezing point. We are using sodium chloride. How do we do it? Okay, so how, what's the amount of sodium chloride required to lower the freezing point to negative 0 0.52? So what we do, we have the two freezing points. So whatever substance you are given, you have to subtract its freezing point from the sodium chloride freezing point. So in this case, we are saying the sodium chloride freezing point. And if you compare with debucane, you'll see that the one for sodium chloride is actually um, greater than the one for uh, debucane hydrochloride. So from there, just subtract this smaller one from the greater one. So you have 0 0.5, um, sorry, I'm saying to make this an isotonic solution, you have to deplete or decrease this one to uh, 0 0.552. So if you have to deplete this, de, uh, if you have this to be depressed to 0 0.52, therefore you need to subtract the smallest uh, freezing point from the 0 0.52. So in this case, we have this freezing point minus the one for debucane hydrochloride 
we are going to have 0 0.44 degrees Celsius. As or is sufficient to lower the freezing point of this. So this is actually the sodium chloride that will be sufficient to lower the freezing point to 0 0.52. So if we have that as the amount required, in question, remember, we are talking about a 1% 1 sodium chloride. How many milligrams each of sodium chloride and dibucane hydrochloride are required to prepare 30 mils of a 1%? So, jam, so the solution of dibucane hydrochloride. So we want 1%. So from 1% of sodium chloride gives you its freezing point, 0 0.58 degrees Celsius. What about the one that is uh, 0 0.44? So X give, will give us 0 0.44. So you, you cross multiply the two. Uh, so what I was saying, the 0 0.52 degrees Celsius is a standard. And it's the one we are looking at when we um, uh, calculating for freezing point depletion in preparing an isotonic solution. So any substance will be given, just subtract its freezing point from the 0 0.52. Whatever answer you will find, that's the freezing point that is sufficient enough to prepare an isotonic solution. And once you find the, 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 that, um, that value, just prepare two equations. One, 1% 1 sodium chloride, 1% 1 sodium chloride, <laughs> yeah, well, my daddy so. <laughs> Please tell uh, Chris to give me back my name. So, 1% sodium chloride will give you a freezing point of 0 0.58 degrees Celsius. And I'm saying this doesn't change. This doesn't change, it's a standard. So the only thing now you need is to calculate the percent that is in the one that you've found. So if this is one, if the one percent gives us 0 0.5, Eight degrees Celsius as the freezing point. What will X give us in the 0 0.44? Of course, if you look at 0 0.5, it's greater than uh, 0 0.44. So you expect the percent you find to be less than one. Look at that. Therefore, you find that 0 0.76 percent is actually the concentration required to lower the uh the the freezing point by 0 0.44 degrees celsius and this will make an isotonic solution therefore we are preparing one percent we are preparing 30 mils of one percent so you will get this and use it now to calculate the volumes that are required remember we did uh the last example for you to calculate the volume of uh, the, the grams of dibucane hydrochloride, it's straightforward. It's just the 30 mils multiplied by 1%. The only thing you need to know is what does 1% mean? It means one over 100, or it means one gram in 100 mils, X in 30 mils, you'll find the grams here. Now, these grams, you can convert them to milligrams. So for dibucane hydrochloride, it's easy, it's just here, you will get your, your, your milligrams. 30 mils of a 1%. Remember what we did in step one of exam the last example. 1% the same as one over 100, or one gram gives us 100 mils, X in 30 mils. How many grams are in the 30 mils of, dib of this dibucane hydrochloride? You'll find it. So for dibucane hydrochloride, I would have even explained it before we went further. It's here. But for sodium chloride, now it's the one that we have to go in, we go right, we go left, we come back and so on. Okay, so dibucane hydrochloride is simple. So if you have like 10 marks here, the five marks are free. The five marks are free because they are already here. But sodium chloride is where now you start now saying, okay, 
what is the freezing point of, a, of um, an isotonic solution, 0 0.52. The substance that have been given, what is the freezing point you get and you subtract from that of, uh, of uh, a lacrimo or isotonic uh, preparation. Whatever now you get, make this equation and then calculate the, 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 the percent or the concentration. So we are saying 30 mils multiplied by 1% is the same as 30 mils multiplied by 0 0.01 grams per mil. So ask me where is the 0 0.01 coming from? Is it 0 0.01? Yes. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the 1%. 1 divided by 100 to give you 0 0.01. Okay, so you get 0 0.3 grams, which is equal to 300 milligrams. If you have grams, multiply by 1,000 to get the milligrams. All freezing points are positive. All freezing points are positive when you are when you are doing calculations. The reason we put a negative, I explained, is because of the depletion to show that actually this is cold. And anything below zero goes this side. Or anything to do with depletion. You know, we, we remember when we were talking about acceleration and the deceleration. If it's on a, a mountain, a vehicle is climbing it's accelerating and therefore the value is going to be positive. When it's going down the hill, we used to create deceleration. Even if you were to find a positive answer, because it's going down the hill, the, your answer is going to be negative. In short, this, the, formulas, the formulas were actually the same. We will we, we just interchange the other ones because it's uh, going down the hill. So freezing point values, I know they are negative, Okay, but when you give you like in a table, they will appear as positive. They will appear as positive and as you calculate, you calculate using positive values. Okay. Thank you, Trisha. You calculate using positive values. Okay. But freezing point, we're talking about negative. Boiling point. We're talking about positive values because these are boiling, increasing in temperature, not reducing, freezing reduction in temperature. That's why there's that negative. But when you're calculating here, so this you're seeing here, the 0 0.58 of sodium chloride, it's actually negative 0 0.58. This we have found here, negative 0 0.44. If we're talking about, okay, the freezing point of this is this, always add the negative. Now, to find the one for sodium chloride, and it's the one which has taken us this long. You get the same volume. Now, you're not using the 1% to calculate by 1%. You're using the 0.76% that you have calculated. And then you get 0 0.228 grams. Multiply by 1,000, you get 228 milligrams. So look at 0.76%. It's the same as 0. 0.76 divide by 100, then you get 0 0.0076. Just multiply by 30. Hmm, did I say 30? 30. You get that part. And it's the equations. This is the end of calculations. All we await for now is assignment number two. And the class will determine if you are going to have test two or not when you resume our uh, classes. But for calculations, it ends here. Next week, Friday, like I said, there are two things. There are a few things I would love us to cover. Let me see. Do I have those things? I will.
Yeah, things we need to cover. Uh, things you need to cover. Is it farmers practice? Um, post content is this one. And supply chain management, this one. Yeah, okay. There are things to cover on uh, on uh, compounding. Uh, Mr. Classic, are you getting me? Hello? Are you getting me? 